I will tell you of a great hero named Sigurd, son of Sigmund, no less. Born after his father's death, Sigurd is cared for by the dwarf, Rain. But Rain does not love the boy. Instead, he plans to use him for his own ends. You see, Rain's father possessed a great treasure given to him by the gods. But Rain's brother, Fafnir, killed his father and took the gold all for himself. Fafnir hid the treasure out on a heath and could not leave it. And from the evil in his heart, he turned into a dark creature. A dragon. She can feel it. No. Don't open the door. Go in. Don't turn back. Turn back. Turn back. Turn back. Oh, what is it? Oh. Get back. Ah. A great beast ah. guards yeah. Helheim. Garm is its down. name. And it knows you are here, Senua. It can smell your stink. Dillion's in here. Go. Run. Stay in the what lights. What are you afraid of, Senua? How will you say Dillion if you are too much of a coward to step to in. into the shadow? They can't stop me. Then do it. Run. The beast is stalking you from the shadows. Your sword is useless here. to do. Your father wants them to go away, and he only hurts me to silence them. So he's gone now. But he always come back. He says I will die if I go with them. They say I'm already dead. No, I don't want me with them. Stop! That's why they crawl through the walls. Don't do you them. see them? Do you see their faces? She can't remember when it started, when her mother lost her smile, her eyes gazing past her towards a world she could not see. This is what happens if you reach for the underworld, he said. It was a lot to take in for a child, and the first time she felt the cold chill of fear. I don't talk much about her father, Zinbel. I suppose I just didn't want to risk upsetting her. But it doesn't matter now, does it?
Go anywhere without your light. Take the torch and move. Torch is going out. No, it's not. She hasn't got much time. Burn out. She's too slow. It's not going to burn out. 
She has it. She did it. She's done it. Well done. This place, it reminds her of the isolating, suffocating darkness that she lived through as a young girl. Imprisoned in her room at night, the faces in the dark coming through the walls. She once thought everyone could see them. I mean, that's what children say all the time, isn't it? There are monsters in the dark. By the time she realized that only she could see them, her father, Zinbel, could see the monster in her. She'll have to go under. She can't. She has to. She can't. The torch will go out. Don't. Let's the torch go out. She can do it. She can't do it. Go. The light's gone out. Run. Run. Get through it as quick as you can. The panic is here. What was that? The panic is in your mind. Okay, run. Run. You can get to the light. Get to the light.
feel it. The beast is crawling into your mind, searching for weakness. It found your mother and used her to trap you in here. Did you see her die? I don't remember. I was only five. They told me she escaped the darkness. That she's with the gods. But what if they lied? What if the darkness took her and trapped her here? Rain the Dwarf's sole desire is to possess this dragon's accursed treasure, and he uses Sigurd to reclaim it. He tells Sigurd the story of Fafnir's gold, and the good-hearted hero promises to slay the dragon if Rain would forge a strong sword for him. Sigurd remembers that his father once possessed a sword given to him by Odin. Odin broke the sword to bring about Sigmund's death, but Sigurd's mother still has the pieces. And so Rain reforges the famous sword. Sigurd uses the sword first to avenge his father, and then he and Rain go in search of Fafnir. It's a trap. The beast is coming. Stupid big beast. It's a trap. The beast is coming. Stupid little beast. Spreading. Father. 
God is keeping me away from the others. Away from Tui. I won't give up. I'm not going to rot in here. I'm going to find Dewey. Ah! <laughs> 
He was trying to save her from the darkness. Zinbel was right. Zinbel was trying to save her from the darkness. But she wouldn't listen. And now everybody is dead. Because of her. It's all her fault. All her fault. She's weak. <laughs> she's so weak. She should have known. She should have. Why she doesn't she learn? She learns. Well, she learns. She doesn't understand. Now the darkness has Dillian soul. You're going you to take it. You never give it back. She can search and search, but she will never find it. She's let the darkness in. It's the, the dragon Fafner is so large and deadly that it would be impossible to kill him face to face. But each day, Fafner crawls across the heath to find water. So Sigurd digs a pit in the dragon's path and lies in wait in it. When Fafner slithers overhead, Sigurd sinks his sword into the dragon up to the hilt. Sigurd leaps from the pit and Fafner sees his killer. He warns Sigurd that the treasure will lead to his death, as it led to the death of all who owned it. Sigurd replies that death comes to all men, and every man would want to be wealthy until that day. And he takes the treasure. The beast knows. The beast knows exactly where she is. She's falling for it. She turns for their tricks every time. Plays into his hands. Although Sigurd kills the dragon, Rian wants to keep Fafner's gold all for himself. Rian also wants the strength and wisdom of the dragon, so he drinks its blood and asks Sigurd to roast Fafner's heart for him. Sigurd does so, but when he touches the roasted heart to see if it is done, he burns his finger. Without thinking, he licks his finger and tastes the dragon's blood. In that moment, he understands the language of birds and hears them talk nearby. He put the darkness in you. The lights run out. She'll die. She'll die. She has to. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Stop, stop. stop.